Greetings world. We are anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. Alberta's wildlife act regime is complex and difficult to readily apply, mostly as a result of the need to locate any particular species of animal within the many unique categories used in the wildlife act and to locate and apply the multitudes of exceptions that apply to its already complex regulatory structure. Like most provincial hunting, trapping and fishing statutes the Wildlife Act's regulation regime relies heavily on licensing and similar approvals such as permits and authorizations. The form of such a regime is simple in that it first outlaws the regulated activity except when the appropriate approval, license, permit, is held. This allows the government to conduct an initial eligibility assessment on the approval applicant to impose additional conditions within the approval document, a license setting bag limits, prescribing the open season, and to maintain a record of approvals issued and to whom they are issued. The Wildlife Act regime strikes as a naive regulatory venture. It is quite divorced from any robust appreciation of both the cultural and physical context in which its target activities occur. The extensive exceptions according to Schedule 8 of the Wildlife Regulation. There are 118 different license, permit and other authorizations alone not to mention the many categorical exemptions through the act and regulation especially schedule one of the regulations reflect an entirely unwarranted enforcement optimism hunting trapping and related activities must be policed in what is already one of the most regulation unfriendly and far-flung physical environments but then add in the pre-existing cultural resentful to regulation held by hunter, trappers and the like, then you have a situation right to engender contempt for the whole regulatory venture. This isn't to disparage the limited ostensible wildlife protection goals of the legislation, but rather to point out that in such a practical context, micromanagement is unrealistic to expect most hunters or trappers to know and even assuming willingness to abide by it is unrealistic the crown and a person employed by the crown in the minister's department a wildlife officer or a wildlife guardian are immune from any civil cause of action respecting title to wildlife alive or dead for any act or omission done in good faith without malice while exercising powers or performing duties under this act done in good faith without malice that causes injury to or the death of a stray and for death personal injury or property damage caused by an animal wildlife officers and wildlife guardians while exercising their right to enter lands in the performance of their duties are only liable for willful damage Wildlife officers and wildlife guardians are not liable for death or injury to a privately owned animal for any actions undertaken pursuant to Wildlife Act 80. Confinement or destruction of animal harassing, threatening or likely to damage wildlife. Persons assisting wildlife officers and wildlife guardians are afforded the same liability protections as them while and to the extent that they are in the course of assisting the officer or guardian under the officer's or guardian's direction. Day-to-day -day enforcement of the W is conducted by appointed wildlife officers who are also peace officers, RCMP, conservation officers, and forest officers are wildlife officers by virtue of those offices. Wildlife guardians who are also peace officers, may also be appointed. They all have a primary responsibility of enforcing this act and have all powers necessary to the performance of their duties and to any enforcement, investigation, administration or process under or relating to this act or any directions, requirements, orders or prosecution or other legal proceeding under or relating to this act. They have powers of entry to lands without warrant, 
and entry and search of premises without a warrant where distance, urgency, the imminent danger of the loss, removal, destruction or disappearance of evidence or other relevant factors do not reasonably permit the obtaining of a warrant. Permit premises such as zoos may be entered and inspected without a warrant except where there are private dwellings. The Wildlife Act has a broad offense provision for prosecution of violations. The zoos permit, which is regulated by Alberta Environment and Parks, has been revised to impose new conditions. After a bear was taken through a drive through for ice cream, a video posted on social media in January by Discovery Wildlife Park, showed a one-year-old captive Kodiak bear leaning out a truck's window and being hand-fed ice cream by the owner of the local Dairy Queen. Under the terms and conditions of the Seuss permit, the charges are directly related to the alleged failure of the park to notify the provincial government prior to the bear leaving the Sioux said a statement from Fish and Wildlife. One count is related to the bear being taken through the drive through for ice cream, while the other stems from the bear leaving the facility on other occasions in 2017. What the Sioux got charged for under the act was that they failed to notify Alberta Environment and Parks that they were going to do those things. I'm glad that they followed through with it because it shows how strictly regulated the Sioux industry is in the province. The new conditions include requiring the Sioux to provide more details when asking to transport a controlled animal or wildlife and to keep those animals in a cage, crate or kennel when in a vehicle. And it also says the Sioux cannot put any animals on display outside the facility without prior permission from the province nor can it allow any member of the public to have physical contact with animals such as monkeys, cougars, wolves or bears. We are anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.